What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. What kind of ignorant shit is that? At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. You idiot, you fool! Hey, dummy! This is the Ignorance is Blessed podcast. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Hey, idiots! We're back! It's me. I don't know why I'm being so weird. I'm here with one of my best friends, Jeffrey Baldinger. Hi, that's me. Yay! Yay. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to have you. Listen, you guys, we're just going to fucking- I'm happy to be had. <laughs> I'm happy to be had. You start sobbing. Thank oh, God. You so much for oh. coming to my secret studio that's definitely not my living room. Yeah, I've never been here before. It's no, no All one's new. ever seen it. Mm-mm. Ever. Uh, yeah, we're just going to have a fun episode today. Hell we're gonna, yeah. We're going to fucking... I don't know what we're going to talk about. We don't know where we're going to go. Talk about anything? We can talk about nothing. Jeffrey and I have talk. known each other since... The beginning of comedy. Yeah. Our we, comedy, not since the beginning well, of... Well, we have known each other since the beginning of comedy. I remember you at Henny Youngman's first uh, yes. I, special. W- nobody talks about that I wrote for him. <laughs> he did. Uh, and shout out to my plastic surgeon, because as a 98 you weren't you woman, the you Weren't you the wife that he asked people to take? Yes. Yeah. And see, I have been taken. <laughs> oh. Le- like a Liam Neeson film, <laughs> I have been took. I remember that from the movie. <laughs> I never actually saw it. Neither did I. I fucking have no uh, idea what it's about. I just know. It's about being took. Yeah. Uh, I think a daughter is involved. Does this kid just keep getting kidnapped? Aren't there? There's a lot of those movies, My right? My favorite thing to do is theorize movies I haven't watched. Right. And people watching are going, why are you talking about this? But aren't there like three or four of them? You're taking one, taking two, taking three. And, At uh, what point is he, is her his daughter taken by child protective services? More taken, taken for more for taken, more taken. Is that real? <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, <laughs> taken, taken back, back. taken it, back. Does any has have you? And then there was a crossover, them? taken back to the future. Taken back to the future. Or is the crossover Dude. with Doc Brown and he has to go back in time, save I've Marty. I've got a great Scott set of skills. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so stupid. Dude, Back to the Future is so good. It is. And hopefully they'll never remake it. I'm so scared that they will. As far as Zemeckis is concerned, he said that they can remake it. Like As long as he's alive, it will not be remade. How old is he? I don't know. Hopefully. Keep Zemeckis alive. Keep Zemeckis alive. Man, yeah, that movie, it's all it's it's a perfect trilogy. It really like the whole thing is great. Yeah, past, present, future. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's one of the only. I mean, there are a lot of good trilogies out there, uh, but I mean, they're they're more recent than there used to be. But that was the first one that I would say that each movie, like, could stand on its own. Could stand on its well, not on its own, but they, well, I guess they need the a bit of- diminish in quality is minimal. minimal like each one is at least good you know what i mean there's yeah, yeah. It's, none, none of them are, them are like, like uh, bad like, what's your favorite one well the first one is it's so good the, i love them all though as a kid i probably liked the second one the best just because the future, the future and, and everything past, like that dude it's wild being past <laughs> now we're way past 2015 yeah and they had flying cars and fucking 3d movies hoverboard? like when are we gonna get 3d movies <laughs> well <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> what else was there? There was the hoverboard. The hoverboard, the self tying laces, the self drying jacket, the little piece they put that food in the microwave. The hydration. Like, Boop. Yeah, hydration level four, please. Yeah, that's psychotic. That's amazing. Yeah, and then oh wait, remember that? And it was Pizza as part Hut. Of the future, yeah, you know, Pizza Hut. But so there was they, like faxes being delivered in their house <laughs> instead You're of like fired. they couldn't conceive of text messaging. Text messaging. They were sa- in home faxes. Literally, we have FaceTiming, but there's no way that the uh, written word Could, will be uh, yeah. deleted. Yeah. Like no, nothing. <laughs> it couldn't possibly come on any device besides paper being printed out of a fax machine. I think in the right. ceiling was that. Weren't they but everywhere? It's crazy. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> they couldn't conceive of it. But like Star Trek already had like texting you know what i mean it's like and the next generation came out in 87 so it was before or so that was after uh back to the future but 
Um, like, but still, the original still had texting. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like they couldn't. Like, they still needed paper. Like, yeah. Or was someone just really dead set on like, no, I think this is how it's actually gonna be. <laughs> because someone must have at some point, and the uh, studio or somebody must have been like. Well, we should try to keep it realistic to what we think that year will be like. We need to keep and it not grounded. Not that they did, but somebody tried that. We need to keep it as grounded as possible. Flying cars. Flying cars. Trump president. Um, oh, I mean. Well, Biff. Yeah, Biff, who I mean, is Trump? That's didn't yeah. the Simpsons. The Simpsons predict. I mean, yeah, the Simpsons predicted a lot of shit. I mean, there's Simpsons aficionado. Everyone. Yeah. Hi. This man, I think. You I, seem like you would quote every episode top to bottom. I have, uh, <laughs> not every episode, but I there was I had uh, when I was in college, we took a road trip from Kansas to New Orleans for Mardi Gras, and oh, we were driving back, and you know I was in the back, I was like very still like we were we was done, we I was very drunk at the time, and just like one of my friends just like Jeffrey, tell us a Simpsons episode. <laughs> Tell us a Simpsons episode. <laughs> and I just start regurgitating that the episode of The Simpsons, the Beer Baron episode, where <laughs> Homer becomes, you know, it's like, what if it's this whole Homer versus just the became him telling The Simpsons episode? Yeah, it's like, I mean, it's the title of the show is Homer versus the 18th Amendment, which is when he becomes the, uh, when they reinforce, <laughs> uh, uh, what's it called? Um, um, prohibition. Prohibition, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, I just. From the intro to like just every line interactions between characters, and they just my friends are laughing the whole time, not because I'm doing it well, but just because I'm doing because it. Because it's insane that you're recapping exactly, the entire, exactly. even like the minor plot lines. Oh, so this is a story for you guys, the viewers and listeners. But um, two or three years ago for my birthday, uh, I think it was two years ago. We all went to a group of us went to Joshua Tree. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we so Jeffrey was there. My friend Sam, who you guys will remember from uh, a previous episode, Buddy yep. Hutton, Steph Tolev, and that might have been was it. Laura there or no? No, she no. was gonna be there and yeah. then didn't come okay. randomly. Yeah. Whatever. Um, some of us did mushrooms. Me and Steph and yeah. Buddy. Uh, so we're out in this beautiful backyard doing mushrooms. I'm looking at the stars. He is in the hot tub, which we had all originally been in, and the mushrooms yeah. started kicking in, and we all started talking about this, how we're human soup or whatever. Right. Classic mushroom talk. Yeah. So for people who haven't done mushrooms- Which at the time, I hadn't. Have you done them since? Yes. When did you do mushrooms? Um, I feel, when my <laughs> good friends do mushrooms, I don't know about it, I feel personally attacked, and I don't know why. I am just like, I, I am a- part-time shaman in my heart <laughs> when did you do mushrooms uh over the past uh year and a half i had done them with uh my ex your ex yeah I'm trying to get you into drugs the things people will do for love did you trip or just like a microdose yeah yeah trip wow where were you at uh, my place inside inside god <laughs> you gotta to get a new experience erase that for uh, several reasons several which reasons won't talk about. yeah but at the time, he had never done mushrooms. He wasn't doing mushrooms. Yeah. Um, Sam took a little. And there's this like situation that I don't know if this is universal for people on mushrooms, but it seems I, I, I don't assume anything that I have happened with a drug is like this unique thing that only happens to me. But there's something weird about like space and distance where people can seem so far away when they're like. Like you can be having a conversation with someone right here, and right. people they were in the hot tub, which was maybe ten feet away. Yeah, it was me. Who who else was in the hot tub with? I it think was me Som. and Sam. The time I'm thinking of, everyone else had gotten out by then. Okay, so it was you and Sam fucking cooking in this hot tub. Right, it was a good hot tub. They were in there for what seemed like hours. Yeah, talking about this, they were like going back and forth because Sam is <laughs> also Som's a also, Simpson fan. Yeah, like high level. Yeah, they were you could have like having a Simpsons knowledge quote off, <laughs> and. We were over here having our own conversation, and it's one of those things on mushrooms where, like, you sort of lose awareness of everything around you for moments, and you come back, and there's aware. So I'd be coming in and out of like being aware that my friends are in a hot tub quoting The Simpsons and doing like impressions of Homer, <laughs> "Help me!" and stuff over here. And it which must- was Marge. That's Marge. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you guys, <laughs> you guys yeah, get if it. You didn't know wasn't what that doing an was. impression of Homer. He was doing. The was only doing impression, impression I'm good at from The Simpsons is Maggie, and which it's is? only audibly. 
I don't even think that's true. No, that's uh, not <laughs> even. It's not even good. Um, it's okay. I got it. It's fu- you get the idea. Yeah, Marge um, was better. Really? It was. Homie. Yeah, I mean that was not as good. Okay, well let's okay, just move on. The first time. Let's do it. Uh, I used to. Well, okay, I'll get to this in a second, but. I'm coming in and out of staring at the sky and like dancing to music. i will just fucking alone standing there while everyone else is laying down. And then I'll hear them go like Simpsons. And I'm like, ha ha, just having these moments of ha ha. My friends are having so much fun over there hearing a Simpsons quote. And I'm like, hee hee. And then I'll like go off into mushroom land. And this happens about 10 times before I'm like, wait a second. Je- Jeffrey's not on mushrooms. <laughs> He's doing this completely sober. Just doing sober. this sober, which has been... <laughs> Throughout my life, that has been said about me. Uh, I mean, you're I've, you're sober. I've also had that too, to the point that, like, when I think about my like past, when I used to drink a lot more, like I'd go yeah. out and party. I really, truly believe a lot of my drinking was like, I'm drinking so you guys are okay with how I'm behaving. Yeah, that was. So you can justify the fact that I'm standing on a table. That was a hundred percent true. When I was in uh, co- like my first year of college, uh, I was at this house party and my cousin went to the same college and she was a year older than me and we were at this house party and I was, you know, dancing. I was going wild. And from her perspective, she called my, like she called my mom the next day. (laughs) She's like, Jeffrey's out of control. He's like drinking so much. He's doing like, he's going crazy. I'm worried about him. And then like a week later, she called my mom again. And this is my mom told me about this. She, She goes, so I just found out Jeffrey doesn't drink. He that was just him. That was just he was just dancing was on your tables. Mom like, mm-hmm, that and my mom's sense. like, yeah, no, that that's that's about right. That's- I was confused earlier when you were saying that. But. You're like, was he not dancing? Yeah. Was he sitting around barfing? How was he? Yeah, because and then like I remember a few years ago at the at the comedy store, you know, we would have like dance parties Holiday at the comedy parties. stores. Or, I think like, there was one night where we were like going hard on, not even a party. Yeah, I think no, it was just playing music on the patio. Yeah, it was not a it was not a holiday party. It was there was not a party. It was just us a at day. the comedy store at on on the day. And I remember Sandro just announces, he doesn't do drugs. This is just him. He does. <laughs> this is just him. This is just how he is. This is just how he is. <laughs> Which for some people is far more frightening. Yeah. I mean, I relate to that. I got the bartender at my friend Maddie's wedding in maybe like 2014 or 15. It was a small wedding. It's in this small venue. We're all dancing. It's very early on in the wedding. I gave a speech that bombed. Classic. Stop asking me to give speeches at weddings. <laughs> People well, don't who's think we- I'm Whose wedding was it? My friend Maddie. Uh, okay. I don't know if you ever met him. Uh, you probably didn't meet him. He's from college. Okay. He just passed away. Um, Sorry. But I didn't want to bring down the mood oh yeah, i remember you went to the um, funeral recently the just the f- honestly i swear to god i've i said this about him before i've said i'm like the funniest person i've ever met yeah like if if he started doing stand-up it's all just like he would we would yeah. be like all right well i guess you're taking my spots like you're right literally but he also was sane enough to be like i'm not gonna fucking be a clown i want to have a nice he was life. stable <laughs> he was a stable person just, just enough for that but then in other ways completely insane right. i got the bartender told him that she was cutting me off and he's like she has not i hadn't started drinking (laughs) she's like we've got to cut that woman off she's out of control and he's like she hasn't had a drink and i hadn't that's amazing i I mean that's it's so like that's our uh my that's like the hyperactivity like that's yeah yeah, it's like probably an adhd or just like whatever possibly but it's just like it's the energy like we like feed off of energy yeah sort of stuff it's like an extroverted comedian thing where i mean you you it happens on stage or when the the audience is high energy your energy goes up yeah exactly so when other people are doing it or like you get people involved now that's kind of it's feeding itself I mean this. I mean this app. This is throughout my whole life. It was this sort of thing. It was like I remember at prom, I was dancing on the fucking speakers and stuff like that. Everybody was telling me to get off, and I was like, "What?" And they're like, "Where's the alcohol? Where's the?" Alcohol? I was like, "I'm not drinking any. Like I'm. I don't have any." They like patted me down. I was like, "Oh it's yeah, it's nothing. I'm. I'm just having fun." <laughs> they're like, "Oh god, you're weird." You're like, weird. Yeah, I went. I have had multiple people in my life start conversations about cocaine with the assumption that I am a regular cocaine user. Never I've have never done, done it. Never I'm, have done I, it. I'm I'm very aware of how I am. Nobody yeah. needs more of it. Like I'm not. And I know people who have done it and do it and stuff like that. And it's like I get why you'd assume that. I yeah. understand. I but, see how they are. Yeah. No, yeah. I understand. I am completely 
sober and clean and coming up with a business idea for no reason several yeah. times a day. I, and w- with no follow through. Oh. I, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, if I had followed through on literally anything <laughs> oh I've ever done. Oh, my God. Who knows where I'd be? Just. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've had several of those together. <laughs> so plenty of those. What I fucked. Yeah, what would have become of Quarantine Weekly if we had gone oh more God. than eight, ten weeks? <laughs> seven. Seven. Um, oh, it I, seemed like seven. You know, we recorded. Oh. We recorded seven. We only released six, I believe. <laughs> Whatever happened to that episode? I don't know. But I, I remember Ed uh, Greer just told me one time. He was like, "Man, if you and Jess had just continued to do that, it probably Quarantine be huge. Weekly, it would have been huge." Yeah. Well, I looked at because I have re brought back the podcast, and I have been you know uploading it and i look at the numbers and like also the podcast is like in 2020 there was like a notable and i'm like why did i go i need a i need a break because you needed a break you You needed a break like that's the thing that's a hard thing with like stand up not even just stand up like creative things it's like it's one thing if uh, if any of your ideas somehow came not somehow but like you know obviously like tv shows and stuff do come with funding right but it's like, how much energy can you give and get nothing back right. when you're trying to survive? And and like, how much output? Like again, like the amount of effort that you put towards something is based essentially on what the return that you're getting is in that immediate sort of thing. So yes, you need to be okay in, if you're going for an artistic endeavor, if you're chasing your dream, passion, whatever you want to, however you want to frame following uh I just want your passion or whatever fuck me because they think i'm cool because i'm on stage right exactly if that's your if that's your goal uh which <laughs> obviously for both of us Hello, um chicks but like you obviously can't expect to make a return right away that's yeah. just not it's a it's, lot of investing exactly but there is Timeless. some return and if you're spreading yourself all over this stuff then essentially you have to focus on the things that are giving you the return yeah that make the most sense like i want to do it all yes but only these two things are really getting anything getting back. anything back and i love these two things yeah. and i'm really passionate about these two things so it's okay so yeah i'm gonna focus on these and while these would be awesome i i just can't there's just well no and i it, yeah it's the same thing where like having to have that moment of because boy have i had to have the like i have overextended myself yeah i am not and then you're not giving the right amount of effort to any of the things. So right. everything's kind of losing quality, slipping. It's that uh, Ron Swanson quote, you know, where he's like, don't half-ass multiple things, whole-ass one thing. One thing. You know? It's so true, though. I, like, had to make rules for myself, which I have continued to break. Of course. Because I'll have an idea, and in the moment I'll go, like, let's run away with this. Right. Where the skill I'm working on now, which I'm very bad at, is, like, you keep that idea tucked in. You don't need to bring up the idea you just had in your Every head to people. Every single time, yeah. Because the other thing is, is I've had things where I go, oh, we should do this. And then in my head, I immediately go, I can't do that. And then that person keeps Runs trying to follow it. up on it. Right. And they're like, let's do it. And But then the fucking like, ego in me want, doesn't want to be like, well, it was my idea. So like you can't go do it by yourself. Right. Which a little bit I probably let go of. But like. Well, it's also like th- there's another <laughs> aspect. But I can't do it. So it's like, no. There's also another aspect to it where it's like, and this is something that I've had to work through as well because when there is there's been times where you go for something all of a sudden this oh this tangential idea and you're going so far and then you hit whatever roadblock happens yeah because there's in every creative endeavor there's a roadblock whatever whatever it is if you have that other those other things that give you a lot of general return that roadblock's like, well, I'm not. I'll I'll deal with yeah, that later. That and then it just is the end of the road. Fall, you know, it falls by the wayside. Where yeah. it's like, if you just pushed through that, and like we could make that. Yeah, you hit a plateau, but keep going. But like, keep going. It's like you have to decide: is this? That's the point where you have to decide: is this idea the thing that all all of a sudden took all of your attention away? Yeah. And you were f- so focused on that, but then you hit that one roadblock, and you're like, uh. I yeah. I know all the I already passed a few this. roadblocks over here, so I'm gonna focus on this. That has led me to be like, oh, am I just am I just giving up because am I, I giving hit up on one a thing that's gonna that could take me a lot more places? Yeah, you know, and feed this more because if I can do that, then you know, it's like that sort of finding that balance is so hard too. Because then, I, but then there's time there's times where I go, is this such a great idea that I should run away with it, or is me running away with this? 
creating my own roadblock on these other things I'm already working right. on. Where it's like, oh, this had momentum. I got to stop and write country music. <laughs> right. And then that got a little momentum. And I'm like, well, I should probably get back to the thing that has lost momentum. Because you're, <laughs> well, the thing is, like, in that case, because it happened to us with the musical, too. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, you know, in those cases, it's, there's there's that uh, fear of being, uh, the fear of perception. Of yeah. being seen as the thing that you don't want to be seen as. Yeah. You know, you like when you're in a creative space, you you have this idea. It's like I want to be seen. Like for us, I mean, I guess like for us, we want to be seen as stand-up comedians. Like we are yeah, stand-ups. Like that's, that's what I what want. We when you are s- doing. That is definitely for me. I know. It's like no matter I what I do, that's what I I want people to think of me and go stand-up comedian. Yeah, same. And that's a hundred percent true. And it's like I want that. But we have all these other talents and and, and things you enjoy loves, like music and writing and like yeah. acting whatever whatever it is yeah podcasting, it's like podcasting uh pet owner uh, you <laughs> owning know, things whatever it is uh, i don't know oh, um uh, sorry <laughs> but like for like for your country music it's like well it was gaining traction but i i don't want to tour as a country music act i want to tour as a comic Comedian, who yeah. does this stuff but then you think about like think about like Donald Glover or Hannibal Burris right now, where it's like their joke music career that st- they started as a joke turned into them Bigger being than- huge. Like Childish Gambino, he created on a Wu Tang name generator. Like that's yeah. where he came up with that name. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like like something so silly. Yeah, like the and then now that's it created such a huge legitimate not comedy raps but like legitimate, legitimate yeah great music and same thing hannibal's doing the same thing he's on tour with his band right now you I know, know it's know like that. yeah it's just like oh well, that's where hannibal's been yeah <laughs> yes. i live under a rock it's not a reflection of anyone not go- doing well and i no, always but- worry about that with social media that like my fear is there's this expectation that everyone should know what everyone's doing yeah so it's like someone could be the star of a tv show and i swear and to no god idea. i would have no clue and it's not like because tv's dead um. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, like I, I just it, have these made up fears of like, I would never want someone to think I'm big timing them for going right. like, oh, what have you been up to? Right. And they're like, I just won an Emmy. <laughs> yeah. Like that's daytime. Um, I also technically won one. If you consider the fact that I was a contestant on Let's Make a Deal I mean, the year huge. they won. That's just like I technically won an Oscar because I was in the movie Her <sighs> as an extra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Oscar winning. No. That's so funny. No, I played the voice of Scarlett Johansson. Um, <laughs> <laughs> got range. Um, yeah, it's so that balance is so hard. And then like, there's an extra layer of how to balance things when you, because I think a lot of people, if they have a creative endeavor, creative out, they like they're like, what if this was my job? Right. And boy, is that a whole fucking thing when it becomes your job, and then it's. The amount of pressure, because at the, at the end of the day, the root of us, or of anyone having to go, what do I need to cut off here because there's too much, is like, it's capitalism. Right. Look, if we lived in a communist world, I could do all the things <laughs> I wanted to do. But because but you're out here making us pay all these. <laughs> but there's also the idea of like, but would you, like, there, there is that, well, there's that thought experiment where it's like, if you had all of Michael Jordan's talent, like if you had this, all of his skill, yeah. but your will your mindset you? how many do you make it to the nba uh, are you uh winning any championships like that's a good question you know what i mean it's like some people like some people wouldn't even make it to the nba even though they have the raw skill we know plenty of, like you know maddie the funniest person in the world yeah but he wasn't interested in stand-up or yeah. you know whatever it is and there, we know so many people who are so funny that are that get no recognition Oh yeah, there. I mean, but it's so weird. I don't know if you have this. Like, when a random person finds out you're a comedian, they go, "Who's your favorite comedian?" And I, it's I don't have a single favorite comedian. No, I have comedians I love, and it, it changes from, you know, week to week, month to month, based on like who I've seen working on something new lately, and like and what when, I like that they're doing, or or I'm just thinking of like I've been thinking about this classic. Yeah. Thing, but almost every time, I I hate that I have the feeling of like. You're not gonna know who this is, right? Uh, well, when when but you should when they ask me that, I just I I have to say, well, who do you know? Yeah. Who do you know? And then I can base 
I can base my answer off of. Well, here's who I like of the people. You of like. the people that you know, these are this is you know whatever. Or I or like, do you want to know like up and comers or whatever? It's like who yeah, I'm like who's a fan of, you... like all that stuff. Yeah, and it's it's also just so crazy because, I mean, I guess with social media that has given like a little bit of a push into the predictability of like, well, this person is gonna probably get X Y Z because. I don't know. There just doesn't seem to be rhyme or reason that makes sense to me on the people who get because there still is the industry like social media. You can if you get in the algorithm and pop through, you can break through in your own way. And yeah. then, by the way, the industry will come around. And of course, just be like, cl- I've always been, I've, I've said from day one. And Clark, you're like, well, it's day eight million. Uh, Clark Jones, you know, Clark Jones. Yes. He had an amazing, a really funny tweet. Uh, I know how dated that makes me sound. Uh, but remember Twitter. Uh, but. He had a hilarious tweet where he's like, me, wins an Oscar, industry, we'll start looking at you now. Yeah, it's fucking, <laughs> it's like, keep doing what you're doing. Hey, but you're, then, on our, you're on our radar now. But then there are some people who get like kind of plucked up at a very early level. It's yeah. developmental. And it's not, me saying this isn't like those people. So it's, I don't understand why them and not this person. Right. Um, and I'm always trying to figure out like, what is it that you... There, I think it's marketability. There's marketability. Perceived marketability. Exactly. And then it's just, it's it's luck as yeah. well. There's like so much luck, right place, right time. Just the person to happens see to see you and somebody they're in the mood there. and they can. Exactly. And then it's follow through as well. Like where if you're in that lucky spot where the person hands you their cards like, hey, hit me up. And you don't, don't. then that's the lost opportunity. You know, and you don't you don't necessarily realize that until you you know you self reflect or whatever. It's like oh, I should have I should have called that yeah. person and there's so immediately much... and not waited or what or like you called them too late or you know whatever it is. I mean, I am probably in the position I'm in because of the amount of people that I've just been like okay, and then like too afraid to follow up. Same, which is so crazy uh, because the confidence with which some other people would probably just be like hey, just hitting you up again a day later. Uh, because well, that's the other thing. That's that's the negative side. I think we uh, have this a little bit in common, where it's like the the negative side of fake it till you make it, which is sometimes we fake it so well that we don't. Nobody thinks that, that we you need help it? or we need oh. to uh, be like. There's no like. Dude, I had. Oh, I'm fine. Like people ask me, you know, it's like, oh, let me. You know, open for you or whatever it is like this was years ago before i was headlining or anything like that it's like let me open for you i'm like i i'm i'm looking to open for somebody right you know, yeah it's like, I, I remember need to- in like 20 god 2016 2015 2016 brody was like i would love to sit down with you and like talk about touring because i would love to like learn what you're doing and i, right. I was like what and the, i mean the amount of people who by the way the by the way <laughs> By the way, the amount of people with touring agents at major agencies that have hit me up for help, it's fucking psychotic. Yeah. And just in a nutshell of like proof that I have fucked myself on this, like following up and not speaking up and going, actually, I am looking for an agent right now. This happened so recently. So it's like, oh, I still I'm still doing this thing. Mm -hmm. I was backstage after I I opened a show with for Theo at the comedy store. And I was like, f- I really went into the green room to f- fucking pee in peace. But then I was like, oh, it's near the end of the show. I'll hang out yeah. and say hey, thank yeah. you. And these uh, two agents walked in. And one of them I guess I've met before. Mm-hmm. He looked really familiar. But then it was like these people who I'm like, you look familiar, but what are you doing in the green room? And like, oh, I'm, I'm supposed to, if you see something, say something. Whatever. <laughs> but we had a moment I was like, hey. And he was like, Oh, you don't remember me. We met a long time ago. That's not even the point of the story. Major agency. And the other guy's an agent. And this guy introduces me to him and he goes, oh, this is Jessica Michelle Singleton. She's so funny. She's like, and he said, back in the day, which is not untrue, she was like, when she first started, she was opening for Bobby. She's opening for Ari, Mark Norman. And, and everyone came to me and like you gotta you gotta see this girl she's the future she's the next big female comedian yeah you gotta sign her and then i went i like in that moment i went but you didn't (laughs) which is fine right but then he goes well yeah but you ended up somewhere else and you've turned out fine and instead of 
taking that opportunity to, you know, if I had been, I don't know. Instead of going, no, I, I could have just gone, oh, well, you know, right now I'm, I'm looking I'm for someone o- to looking, let me know. Yeah. I just went, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no, I, because it was this thing of like, well, I don't want to seem like I, I did go places, but I did it all a, a fucking on my own. that's true. I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm still making it. I'm, yeah, I am. I, Cause you want that perception of like, yeah, I'm, I'm successful. But in that moment, we have to realize like, oh, this is, this is another opportunity. And I don't. I and just go, yeah. I'm a similar, <laughs> you know, similar thing happened to me um, a few years ago. I was opening for Eliza, and we were just hanging out in the green room. And she's great. She like she gives yeah. opportunities, you know, all the time, which is awesome. Yeah. And we were just talking in the green room, and I'm, you know, we're not like friend friends, you know, whatever. Like, but we've known each other for yeah. a few years, which is why she, yeah, you know, cordial, whatever. friendly. And she was just, and she was asking me how things were going and like are you doing these festivals like are you getting did you submit for just for laughs or whatever and i was like i'm not doing that this year and yeah and then you look back and you go instead of going instead of going like i haven't gotten to i i wasn't able to introduce to the person who was actually going to look at my stuff i wasn't able to get a showcase this year like i don't want to be i don't want to overstep but how do how do like that was an opportunity that i just like let slip after after the fact, I was like, that why I should have I should have talked to her about that. She was she was opening the door for it. It wasn't like I was like, yeah, hey, chase but you we down. do this thing where you feel like you're like, oh, I, I want this person to think that like I'm doing stuff. Right. Because there is that mindset of like when people think you're doing stuff, they start booking you for stuff. And that's a real thing that happens. Exactly. The fucking. Oh, we're going to take a quick break. And I have an actual example of this exact thing. When we come back. Yeah. OK, so we're back and this. Clearly turned into a comedy podcast, which is fine. That's <laughs> what fine. we do. Um, so on the note of like when people think you're doing stuff, then they want to help you do other stuff. This is such a funny thing that happened. Um, I was at the the improv, the 60th anniversary. Yeah. Hollywood improv or the whole yep. improv chain, I guess, turned 60. They survived 60 years. 1963, formed um, in New York. Yeah. And so they did like a, a, a celebration. It was a fun party. It was a fun party. There was a, a photo thing. Mm-hmm. I took a photo. I looked really nice. In the photo with me is Nate, my boyfriend. Yep. And also at WME, agent, big agent that he he works with, uh, Andrew Russell. Mm-hmm. We all took a photo. Great. Didn't think anything of it. The next day, I'm looking at these photos. I look good in this photo. I want to say, good job, fucking improv. Thanks for having me. I post the photo. And I... I am confident because I posted because he happens to be an agent at WME. I'm not kidding. Within minutes, followed by an agent at another major agency, texted by an agent from another major major agency, going, "Hey, I missed you at the thing. We gotta catch up," which is fine. Right. It just is like, oh, perception. perception. And I probably should have you cut all this out because this is probably a shitty thing. Like, <laughs> god damn it! But it's just like you uh, people. And, but you know, I used perception. to think it was, yeah. I used to get so mad and in moments where I'm not like being my best self and like being like mentally healthy and thinking about things clearly, I still do and think, oh, it's fucking this bullshit industry. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, and Nate, my boyfriend who works at an agency has helped, helped me with this perception by going like, the, just the fact is there is no way for them to really keep tabs. Right on how everyone's really doing. Yeah. So there are people who slip through the cracks in a way that people just go, well, surely they're somewhere. And if you're at this level where, it, you know, people don't start creeping around to like snag you until you're at like right. such a big level where they're like, well, now we should, this is so much money to be right, made off exactly. of this person. But they just go, oh, they're funny. And then sometimes, and sometimes like you look out and the booker of a club likes you a lot. Yeah. And keeps giving you spots like, a, you know, showcase club. Like if yeah. if you happen to be one of the booker's favorites, you're going to get more opportunities. And to- any comic will tell you this with a showcase club. When bookers change, shit changes. Shit changes. We've so, gone through four, book, three bookers at the at store. At the store. The Laugh Factory is Laugh constantly. Laugh Factory is constantly changing. The improv changed. The, yeah. The, after the pandemic, the improv had a whole overhaul. Yeah. Like we went through four uh, at the improv. And it's like it. And well, and it's also like comedy is subjective. Yeah. It's personal taste. And like it takes work to not go, 
this is personal. You're just it like, takes I'm out of the so mix. so much work. Because at the end, because as much as you say it's not personal, it's not personal, it's not personal, your comedy is personal. So if somebody doesn't like your comedy, <laughs> it is personal to you. Like, it is. Like it's just, I mean, business-wise, it's not personal. They have their favorites. And you have to think, like, look, it's not... Uh, They're looking at whatever them, their hard line or assumption. Them so not much liking of it is, me doesn't mean I'm not worthy of performance. Performing. But that... The ability to separate oh. your like, I bared my like, I this is all me. This is who I am. They're rejecting me. It's like no, 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 no. They're not like, yeah. You and can't it's, think that it's so hard because like it's so often not a hard no, and it's like it's which all, is worse? Yeah, is is having someone say no, we don't want your comedy here. Worse or that wondering of is it the comedy? Or is, is it, it me? personal? Yeah. Is it is it because I look like X, Y, Z. Is it the topics I talk about? Like, sometimes I go, and let me be clear. I can take a no, yeah, of a rejection. Yes, before we started recording this, I started talking about a vendetta of a city where I was, but. But you still but took no, the I, no. Yeah, I took, but it's like. <laughs> you still yeah. took the no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, not going like, to do rape comedy yeah, where I know, show up and do like, it whether you like it or not. That's the thing. Like, don't take no for an answer is a, is, is is, a worrisome phrase. I think yeah, it should be Yeah, it's like that person soon. will assault you. If yeah. That's their mindset. It's awful. But also, like, could you give, if you're, I would love a note. Why? To, yeah, and just. I would love to go, you know, we, you, the. But we're you looking know why at social media numbers and we just have, you know, with the other investors in the club, we kind of have a rule of who or what, whatever. Go. But you, but you know why they don't give notes. Well, yeah. Cause because they, if they say. Because a lot of people are like, I don't want your fucking notes. Fuck you. You're stupid. Well, that or it is just not right now. And you don't want to create a vendetta. You don't want to create true. this thing I where I wish more like, people would lose the fr- use the phrase not right now. Right. Because you're absolutely right. A no, by the way, anywhere. And, and that's like important to remember for comics watching or listening like it's not a hard no yeah it's a i mean not for some right people now, out there it might it be might be no. but like also depending on what they say like oh we're just not interested right now because you did this this and this it's like depending on what that is you could be like this is discrimination you're doing this you because That's true. whatever it is but and it's so, also at the end of the day like because clubs will be like i've had clubs go well, this you're not the kind of act that usually draws here so which I appreciate. Which is uh, an honest. But part of me goes like, "Have you had an act like me?" But then right. it's like they maybe have, and they go, "Turns out, no one came to see this person." I yeah. don't know. But then you know, it's like, but then also it's like, but that, but I'm not like that person. I do this, this, and this. Yeah, and, you know, like that sort of stuff. And saying just no, it releases them of liability or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like that. And at least in theory, it like I guess like closes the door to you. They go like, "Okay, well." For me, something like that is once I like get over my initial like emotional reaction, like <laughs> right. rejection is like, OK, so like that's not a door I'm going to keep knocking right. on. You go where the love is. You yeah. know, it's like you or have I'll to circle back when I have very clearly reached a different level with exactly. like, my audience and how I'm drawing and like exactly. the numbers to show for it. Um I don't know. This got real comedy heavy. It did. And not even com- it, like industry heavy. Like Industry heavy. It's inside just Inside like, baseball. It's, it's um, just a grind is the whole point. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, you, you focus on what gives you the return to circle it back. Yeah. Well, like, and what you can control. Right. It's like I control, I can control working on my material. Yeah. I can control doing my best when I'm getting up. Am yeah. I writing new stuff? Am I... Uh, you know, giving it my all. Am Following I Following up with emails, like really actually reaching out, picking a date, you know, you basically making this your job, essentially. Well, no, that, like, well, that's what I guess is. that was sort of the root of where yeah. of what how, what led us here was the mind fuck of making your thing, your career is that there's so much other th- stuff that goes into it besides yeah. just the performing, unless you end up being one of these. And I don't I think there's very few people who are like plucked and then have to do no extra work on the side of keeping themselves booked yeah, or that's submitting and whatever. So rare. But like it, it goes from especially when you're in the, you know, I I'm in a good position in terms of being able to like support myself with just the comedy. Right. So there's a little more time to mix in both the like kind of administrative side of things and the writing. Right. Which boy do I need to fucking be better at? But like 
when you're juggling like other jobs, then now ha- now your writing time's cut in half. Right. You're well, trying that's to make money doing, you know, it can't take like it's it's similar. Like if you have a writing job, like if you got a writing job it, and you're a stand up, you typically when you're on the writing show, you don't do as much stand up. No. And but, you know, before you get into that sort of thing, you think like, oh, I would love to have a, a job writing on a show because then I could just write in the day and then do stand up at night and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. But like, that the it, night is gone. It splits your energy like it's the energy that is you need to focus on writing so you don't have the bandwidth necessarily to do yeah. as much stand up you still want to keep your chops going but it's like there's just oh, not hard. as much bandwidth you know and so it's it's a weird it's a struggle it's uh, patrice o'neill once said you know it's like i was hilarious till i started doing comedy you that's know, so like, funny do you ever uh this is a thing i do which is like fucking hilariously dumb of i'll be writing something you know script or packet I've for a show that. or <laughs> or even like developing something like I'll have something where I'm like having meetings and or I've sent in a packet or I'm working on a packet. Yeah. And I am nowhere near having a show being run, being on the staff. Yeah. And I'll already go, I just I mean this is really gonna get in the way of my stand up. It probably drove the manager I worked with crazy, but we now I'm better at communicating, like, here's what you're going to get from me. Yeah. And here's what I will and won't do is, like, I would love to write on a show yeah. that I love. Oh, yeah. I am not going to drive my sanity into a, the ground right. for a show I hate and then not get to do the thing that, that actually gives brings me, love. me joy. Yeah. So I finally started going because I didn't know that, like, you could say no to packets. Right. So I'd be like, yeah, I, like I, I <laughs> dude, I, my friend got so mad at me because because she was on a show and she's like, oh, I recommended you. And I just, I didn't know that. It like came through my manager and she sent a thing for this show. And I was like, I just, it's political. And I just get so upset and not funny when I get too into politics. Like it just, yeah. uh, it's, I mean, it's the premise of why this is a show and it's embarrassing, but it's the reality. And the fact is, I don't think I'm going to change. Like, I don't pay attention to what's going on in the world because I become useless and not helpful. Yeah. I just get so sad. I go full white lady. Like, how is this affecting me? I can't go on. <laughs> well, I'd it's... rather just like, what's going on? Is there somewhere I can donate? Can I share something that's actually helpful? Cool. I can't because get you, caught in the cycle. Uh, you understand your voice. You you understand your comedic voice and where well, you're, you're strongest, you know, comedically. And if this is a comedy show that, you know, there are people who are amazing political Comedians. Com- comedians. And there are a lot of people who talk about politics and call themselves comedians and should shut Just the fuck up. Aren't, exactly. But like there uh, your good point isn't a joke. Yeah. And it it's one of those hey, things where oh, racism is bad. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Hilarious. Why are we clapping? And it's like, wait, is racism is bad the joke? I'm not kidding. This, <laughs> this is a real thing I saw happen one time and I won't name the comedian. I don't even know if they still do comedy anymore. I was doing La Jolla, uh-huh. opening for Tony Baker. I was the opening before the opener before because that's how they do it down there yeah. so there'd be like you know three openers or whatever yeah, yeah. and a comedian the comedian was going after me kind of I guess the feature act white man worth knowing I guess in case it's worth knowing at some point in his act I am not exaggerating because I rewatched every set to be like did I miss something would go clap if you think racism is bad people would clap and then he moved on. He didn't talk about race. It was the most psychotic thing I've ever seen. I was like, what is happening? You just needed applause that bad. <laughs> it's a good solve. <laughs> and then spent a good portion of his jokes retelling like street jokes that his niece had told them, but the under the umbrella of like, oh, right. my niece told me these right, jokes. Right. Oh, you do comedy. You should do these. And I'm like, this is just a guise for you to do street jokes. Oh, God. I think I know what you're talking about. I'll tell you off the air. She's smiling. She loves us. Oh, God. Yeah, it's just, you know, I guess the root of all of this is just sort of like gear up. If you're yeah. planning to follow your dreams, you become a one-man business. Yeah, I mean, you, you just, you have to. And you have to make sure that you are, uh, yeah, you, it's okay to say no. It's okay to yeah. focus on things that you uh, are passionate about. And it's okay to say like I don't have the bandwidth for that and stuff like that, but it's 
it, it, it's a tricky line because there's there's no path. There there is no path. It's, yeah, we're all the, chopping like, trees in the woods trying to find. We don't know fucking what the other side of this. Forest. We don't know what our path is until we've taken it. And we look back like, oh, this is the route that yeah, we took. Yeah, nobody knows you know? what's going to lead to the thing. And we don't know what where we'll end up being in yeah. terms of like what our career is and stuff like that until it's until we're dead. And then that's, you know, like, oh, this is this is how that went. And yeah. you know, and so just I don't know, have fun while you're doing it. Just try to like Enjoy try not journey. to get so stressed out. It it can be supremely stressful. And yeah. if you're, you know, it's it's the taking things per- it's like try not to live in bitterness you know what i mean yeah. it's like it's so if the, if it's giving you so much if if the majority of your life in this industry whatever it is comic actor maybe music whatever music art, whatever it is it, if it's art, mostly it's just art. like fuck all these people they don't know it's like maybe this isn't you're killing free, yourself. you're killing yourself maybe find something else you know like that i don't know yeah is it, it's not worth your joy it's like yeah. well that that's the whole thing is like if it stopped being joyful right what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, there's no reason to put, this is a choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, there there are people who are like, it's not a choice. This is all I can do. That may be true. Yeah. yeah no, that's like the that, story you've invented of you being like, I can't do Literally. You have, uh, you're, uh, you shut the fuck up. You have the ability to do a lot of things that maybe don't cause you the m- amount of stress yeah. that this is causing you or yeah. whatever it is. And we're not telling you to give up on your dreams. But- Wait, no, no, no. I'll stop there. Yeah. Because I want to say something. Yeah, please. And it's not a nice thing that I'm going to say. Do it. Chasing your dreams is hard. And you can't give up just because you get nose and you meet roadblocks. Right. Wanting to do something does not mean you should do it. Yes. If you are 100% of the time consistently receiving feedback that you are not good at the thing that you want to make your thing, Quit. What are you doing? You're an idiot. And I say that as someone whose entire podcast premise is based on us all being idiots. Fucking do some mushrooms. Let go of your ego. Because what you're doing is chasing this idea of who you want to be. And it's a thing where we all fuck ourselves. So many people paint a picture of how they envision their life. This is the thing I'm going to do. And then instead of going, you know what? Maybe I need to like open up and see what else the world would like me to do? We do it with partners. People will go, they subconsciously have a vision of the person they're going to be with, what they look like, and they'll fucking cast aside their soulmate because, they're well, I just I picture myself with a brunette. You know what I mean? There, there's so much truth I, to I, that. I, I'm there's, not, you're not going to be in the NBA if you're five feet. There's so much truth to that. Muggsy? Okay. You're probably not. But the, the thing, so... I, you know, I, I'm your saying, point is valid. Give and a good go, but if it's a hundred percent, look for the evidence. It, it's and it like, works both this ways. Is, this is a feedback industry. Yeah. You know, it's like, and you can, if you, if you're able to find a niche that uh, you can, whatever, you're not going to be, you know, uh, Nick Swartzen, or you're not going to be uh, Adam Sandler, or yeah. you know, whatever it is, you're not going to get to that level necessarily. If if your feedback is nobody, if literally nobody likes you yeah. in what you're doing, yeah, if every a, crowd doesn't you know, get it, it's there's some maybe maybe you don't get it either. Yeah, you know it's, it's not there's the there there is that aspect of you know look for the common denominator. What's the common denominator? Yeah. It's you. Well, and that um, goes both ways, and like, it goes both ways because I but, think we both know. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's just just because, but also it's there's. There's a level of delusion that you have to have to follow go for your dreams. Go, to go for your dream to take the risk of like I'm gonna do the thing that everyone says like well that's pretty and it's a really no hard it. line to walk uh, when you have to be delusional but you also have to be self aware yeah where it's like well where am I at what am I what are my capabilities what am I doing but I I know that I'm the best I know that I'm I'm the best person that I can do I'm the best person for this job and blah 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 it's like that's a delusional mindset that you have to have in, in order, order to, to convince have... people to give you the job that you need to have but you also need to be self aware enough to know like okay I can take feedback I can take notes I can improve I can I'm always getting better I need yeah. to figure this shit out it's really hard to balance that because yeah, you have to have a little bit of like 
I guess delusion or just like audacity. Yeah. To be like, I'm, I'm going to chase my dream. And that is, I know I just went on a rant of like fucking quit, but the, uh, but the opposite is true. Where like you, like we all have moments in our careers, no matter what I found from talking to friends who are far above where I'm at. Yeah. You just have a moment where you go like, I'm, I don't have an active project. There's nothing I'm working on. And it's, you know, some people maybe are way more on top of their mental health. But for me, it's actually alarming lately how easily the switch can flip into. What am I? Even I am doing? a failure. What am I even doing? Why I have wasted my yeah. life. What have I been doing? I have no business in this field. And so it's good to be. Give yourself credit. And a thing that I used to do and I need to do some other form of it, but something that helped me in case anyone else is listening and falls into that where it's like, no, you've done things, but you have these moments of, and I think I'm getting to a better place mentally, but I don't know if, if you're like this, where like when I don't have an upcoming thing, yeah, like I've got, I'm planning a tour, I'm dropping the podcast, I'm releasing X, Y, Z. And it's just, it could be, I'm on the tour. Right. It's we're coasting. We're you're on cruise doing control. The thing currently doing the thing but i'm like but i but that person has a special i don't have i can so quickly go into fucking uh, what am well, i yeah, doing because it's, it's the what am i not doing yeah what am i what do i need to do that i'm not doing that yeah where am i all failing these other people and then are doing a hundred other comedians are looking at you going i can't wait to get to where they are exactly and and really it's you they're really killing have to it and separate you're like, the I mean, this is we're not treading any new water here and talking about like we you can't compare yourself to your peers You're like you can well, especially use, here where everyone's popping at different moments or heat and then it's gone and you can use them as bouncing blocks and stuff like that but uh, you really can only compete with your past self yeah. like. Look at you from ten years ago. What what would ten years ago you say about where you're at right now? Would would they be you waited happy too long to start the podcast, or would they be like you know what it is like? How yeah, they'd be what shitting was, their pants. What were their goals? Were their goals to tour the world because you did that? Were their goals to do these festivals because you did those too? Were their goals to perform at all these clubs because you've done that? You know, it's like yeah, and- okay, those are m- m- blocks that you. You'd it's so easy to forget. Make yourself forget because you go you're like, like, what well, next? What else? Once we got them, it's like, oh, well, that was, well, I did that now. So now what's the next There's thing? There's probably some deeper level of like, I thought once I did that, I would just feel eternal right. joy and never return to sadness. And there is nothing. Turns like out that. having my name on the wall <laughs> didn't no... keep the demons out. Right. It's. I mean, it's that, it's the John Candy quote from uh, Cool Runnings. You know, if you're not good enough without if you're not good enough without the gold medals, you'll never be good enough with the gold medals. And so that's like, I mean, that's you a know? whole different conversation of working on yourself. Yeah. But all that to say. And also, I, I want to say uh, real quick, in addition to what you said, as far as like, because there's, there's a whole Tenacious D song about the, the uh, cosmic shame, where it's like, you know, follow your dreams and we'll check in on you. And then, and then uh, uh, we'll see your progress. And then if you haven't made it, we're going to tell you to stop. And then you must stop. You know, <laughs> there's a whole song that they do yeah. like that. But they're also in that in that vein. Uh, I I like to think about those uh, kind of motivational uh, quotes, where it's like, "This person didn't start till they were 40. This person didn't get uh, you know." Everyone do said their no thing to J.K. Till, Rowling, which you know, you're not supposed to bring her uh, up. But. You know, Sam Jackson didn't start acting till he was you know 50. You know, or Morgan Freeman didn't start acting till he was seven. You know, like yeah. all these things. But it worked things. out because there's everyone else who would have been aged for those roles quit when they started at 20. Right. <laughs> but then my my uh, kind of like yeah, that's a little motivational, but. It's not so it it doesn't matter how old you are for when you start, but how long did it take them once they started? That's true. You know what I mean? Like But that so, it still can be So JK Rowling didn't write Harry Potter till uh she was forty or whatever, right? Yeah. Was that her first book that she tried? No, oh, that's interesting. Because that is a you different... You know, because that's a difference. Because that's the same as getting big when you're 20. Like, it's, yeah. Well, it's, yeah she you, didn't, it didn't take that long. That's true. I <laughs> she always may have started late, that's... but she got it right away. You know, it's like, how long do you 
once you've started chasing your dreams, how long do you give yourself? I wanted to, I'm not, by the way, texting. I'm looking up as no, you're no, saying this. I wanted to look up, because um, I looked it up recently, the Wikipedia for Sebastian. Yeah. Who started comedy, years active, 1998. Yeah. Um, I looked this up when I was having a fucking meltdown about, like, how long does it take you to make it? Whatever. Right. And then wh- what your definition of making it yeah, is. Yeah, well, that's the thing is we also keep you can moving pay, the goalposts. You can pay your bills with comedy. That's that, a, yeah. that is making it to the majority well, of people. To me when I started comedy. Exactly. My only goals, I hit them. But then it was like. But now what does making it mean? Yeah, I, and I still don't even know. What does success know. mean? And what does it mean? I don't know the definition of success. I truly don't know. What do, Does anybody have uh, his big a, his The big special that launched him, Aren't You Embarrassed? Like the real, I mean, he was already like a name, but the yeah. thing that took him to where he's at, that was in 2012. Right. And he... And he didn't get on Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee until, let's see, 2016? Uh, that's a long time. He was 39. Yeah. Um, And his first special came out in 2009, so that means he was 36. And until then, he was... He got past at the store in 2005 yeah. and he was just doing the store and like doing his thing and knowing it. And so Sebastian's like, a workhorse. Like he was, he was working as a waiter or a bus boy. Like Beverly Hills Hotel and he'd like run up over. Up until the moment he got pat, like yeah. until he got past at the store. Like you would run back and forth between shifts and stuff like that. Oh yeah. And that, I mean, hard work is so much of it, yeah. but it is like, it can take forever, but having, not but, it can take forever. So, However you need to keep those reminders of yeah. the goalposts you've made. Like I literally used to have, and I have set it up to like put it back back on my wall so it's out and visual. Yeah. Is like, it's a four layer post-it thing yeah. where the top thing will say goals and it's big things I want to do. Yep. And then I have one that says projects. It's things I'm actively working on, whether they're ongoing or like I'm working toward a, an right. album or whatever. And then I had a level that said achievements. Yeah. And so it's like, if I got something, put it in the achievement, which is great. And if like, I, you constantly went back and forth. I've obviously taken it down at some point. Cause it's like, Oh, if somebody sees this, it's like gratuitous or whatever, but it, it makes you important. in those moments when you're like, fuck, who am I? You go, Oh, I did this and I did that. Did and this, I have this and this. these achievements. And it's just like, like kind of bolsters you to go like, I'm cause I this is woo woo, but what I believe the universe gives you signs and points you in the direction you're supposed to go, whether that's in career and relationship in life choices. And like those things are like, Oh, that's, yeah. that's the fucking pinball machine hitting me toward the fucking, that's not a good reference. I don't even, yeah, it could be, but, you know, but it's like, Oh, every time you reference. got one of these, every a show said yes to you, a club booked you. That's right. That's the universe going. Whoosh. Yeah. You keep going. That's, I mean, that's, uh, it was the, that that was the reason I started doing stand up in the first place is because the career path that I was thinking that I was going to go on it kept pushing me to stand up like I was in development I was in production stuff like that and it just like there weren't every every single thing that I was trying to do in that field was shoving me to like oh no you get a set tonight oh no you get you get to perform you get to open for Louis Anderson, you have to do this, this, and I was like, oh, I guess I'll do this. I get, okay. and then I was like, I took, it took a moment where I was like, oh, no, this is what makes me the happiest in the world. Like all that other shit was, yeah, like oh, I want to, uh, I don't want to do this. It's like but chasing like, this an is idea thing. of what I decided I was going to be years ago. Exactly, and then I'm like, wait, the being on stage, doing stand up, doing all this stuff is is the thing, and seeing me, you know, seeing the whatever you want to call it universe your, your choices like yeah. your actions just get validated as get you validated in that way it's like oh yeah no this was the thing that i wanted to do and yeah uh, you know meant to do whatever it is but yeah and sometimes what it is that is like your your next i don't know bump of fucking <laughs> i'm on the right path sometimes it's just a really good set where you go yeah. oh yeah i'm i am a professional yeah, I had I had one of those the other night where it's just like, yeah, this is yeah, dude, I had this is what it is, because like I'm so grateful for the store. Yeah, and I I know that there's more to being put up near the end of the lineup than just who's the most famous or the least famous. Like I'm aware that 
in some capacity, I think I've been put and kept in the place that I usually am in because of the type of energy I bring. And it's like, I've been, I've just, whatever. Like I, I revive the audience, whatever. Right. Someone called me a fucking, the, I'm bad in cleanup <laughs> once <laughs> at the store. We're like, this is, you get the second win. So they stay around and get more drinks. Yeah. I'm like, okay, great. And I have fun with those sets. I've had great sets there, but it, it's like a muscle and it is work. Right. It's because it's not even like you're trying to convince him you're funny. You're trying to convince him to fucking be alive. Right. Are you Because at the store, I mean, that's, I don't know how much your audience knows about the store or whatever, but it's like, yeah. it's a showcase. Style show. And it goes show, And it long. goes from, you know, eight o'clock to 2 a.m. And it's like people's energy, no matter how much fun they're having, taps out usually around 90 minutes. Yeah. Maybe push to two hours. So there's people who are there who want to be there and they're just, you don't think about how exhausted you'll get just enjoying something and laughing. It's like fucking long movies. You're just going, yeah. it's great, but I fucking died near the end. I, I've been going up in that spot pretty regularly, so it's just a certain feeling of like, all right, I got him. It feels good. Great. But it's just a different feeling than like a full ready crowd. Right. And a couple weeks ago, I got to go up on like the early Friday OR show. And I was like, oh. Oh, this is why I'm a paid regular. Like the set I had, I was like, oh, okay. I yeah. understand why I am here and why I've been passed. Cause there it sometimes can seem like, am I an afternoon duty well, on a like recess? That- like what is going on? Those late night sets, like it's, it's muscle building. It's yeah. you are, you're working the crowd. I so do think much it's like, I, that it when you me- get the spot, in the beginning of the lineup or in the middle or whatever it is when the crowd is choice, like they've been warmed up and they're just ready for whoever is next. You've it's built just, a muscle in a different holy way. Holy shit. And that's why I like, am so grateful for them. I love them. I'm always excited to have them yeah. because I do think, and I'm not saying just me, I'm saying anyone in the similar, cause there are a handful yeah. of people who are in that position. It's like, pound for pound makes you a greater comedian. Absolutely. That like, I'm going to come out stronger in those early spots than some other people are. Cause it's, it's just anything else. If yeah. you aren't, if you're playing soccer with people who are just as good at you as you, but no one's better, you're not going to be a better. So- you know what I right. mean? It's I like, mean, there's that, that's I a weird for, reference. I but like, who said it? I, I don't know. It's working it, a muscle. It's like, but yeah, it's like, if you, if you run with people that you're faster than you'll, you'll win You'll always win, but you're not going to get any faster. But if yeah. you run with people who are faster than you, you may lose, but your time will be better. Yeah. You know, it's like, because it's you're trying to keep up or what, whatever it is. Like, yeah, it just it's, makes It's an you... old quote. I don't know. But like, it, it just, you know, you're you're forged in steel, so you're going to be stronger. You know, yeah. Whatever and all that just to say that like sometimes just a really good set makes you go, oh yeah, I need to stop <sighs> panicking yeah. just because I... All that to say, Jessica had a good set the other night. I just, and she wanted Emily, to let you guys are you know. watching? Were you there? Um, um, I want to end on, since this went comedy heavy. Yes. And we kind of talked about the struggle of the road. And we do need to wrap up. Um, Or not the road. Struggle of the road struggle of, of the journey. The road of life of an uh, entertainer, of a comedian, of whatever. Yeah. What are things you do to help keep your yourself grounded and keep putting one foot in front of the other when it's not always... Yeah. All- um... I do a lot of self-reflecting. Like I do a lot of, uh, I I take in what I, I do. I I ask myself the questions of, what am I doing? What am I not doing? What could I be doing better? Um, you know, I just I try to answer those questions. I try to, and I I go for walk. Like I do a lot of walking. I do a lot of uh, thinking. Just thinking, and like. So like to keep myself kind of grounded and I, I do a lot of, uh, like I watch, I, in my past, I've watched a lot of interviews with comedians of, you know, like whatever, like the thing that always stuck with me was, you know, when Bill Burr had said like, keep your head down, don't be a dick. Like, that's just like, do your work and just, you know, people will take notice if you just do the work or the, you know, be so good, uh, they can't ignore Ignore you, you. uh, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, is the, uh, quote that is attributed to Steve Martin that often gets mis said like be undeniable. He's like, be so good. They can't deny you. It's like that sort of thing. But it's, I just think about those. I kind of meditate on those things and try to keep myself a healthy level of the delusion of like, I'm good enough. I'm, I am the best person for these jobs. I, I believe I'm qualified. I I deserve it. And also be humble enough to be like, 
ask for help. Yeah. I, that's the thing that I struggle with the most is asking for help from people that, because we know so many people that could help us out. Yeah. So readily. Yeah. Especially like readily, but there's that hesitance of yeah of like, well, you only get the one favor from the big whatever, Person. Am which I is uh, it? which, which yeah. is a made up thing. Yeah, it's I not mean, true. It's it's not true, but it it is true. But it also is like that's just something that we came up with. Yeah, it's also um, it, you're probably not asking for something so extensive, right. That they're even gonna remember it and be like, exactly. But what a burden! They made me give them someone's email address. Me- meditating on the fact of like, uh putting yourself out there is necessary and yeah. you can't just, if you don't essentially, if you don't ask, you will never get. Yeah. And no one can know what you need. Very few times. And we talked about this earlier. It was like, there are very few times where people get plucked yeah. without ask. Like yeah. people ask for what they want, which is why they get it. You know, it's like, yeah. that's the old things. Like how come so many shitty movies are getting made? Shitty movie scripts are being they finished, finished the and, they, and they can, and they like, turned and they turned them in. Yeah. It was like, okay, yeah, this is the thing. Like, don't be afraid of finishing. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Boy, getting mad at things when it's like you're sitting on a pile of unfinished ideas. It's like, well, well, what movie are they gonna buy from you? What thing did you they put can't the buy end the idea on in your yet, head? You know? Yeah. And so like that's those are the sor- sorts of things that I try to do to keep myself grounded and talk to my parents. <laughs> they keep me grounded. My dad's like I'm a comedian, are you? You know, that's uh, it's the worst <laughs> advice for me. They well, they well, keep, one of them keeps dead, you grounded, but, right? But yeah. that's the thing. It's like they grounded me. I still live yeah. Home. They uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not allowed out to my do my. My sense. dad came to one of my shows one time and uh, called my mom after. He's like, yes, I saw Jeffrey perform, and uh, she goes, "Well, did you laugh?" And he goes, "Yeah, I laughed. I didn't belly laugh, but." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why clarify? Why That's, did you need to clarify? Need to... I don't need, I, but that, you know, brings you back down to earth. Right. Or, new goal, I and guess. And he'll also, he'll also say like, what, what new bits are you working on? And I stupidly will tell him and he'll go, okay, well, I can see how that could work. <laughs> <laughs> like if, like if you did it. Yeah, I'm and you're like, like yeah, okay, obviously. all right, awesome, thank you. That's so funny. Um, But like stuff like that where it's just like being, and being around people who are not, like I have some friends that are not comedians, not in the industry that can just kind of keep you. So you don't have to be. That's the hard part is that like so many of our friends, I think most comedians are yeah. other comedians. Yeah. But the conversation, as we see here, can so easily go to comedy. And it's like you got to check out from stressing about. Right. All the fucking you got to live your life. Because even though this is our life, this is also work. And yeah. that's the that's the hardest part about this uh industry is because this is what we love to do and this is what gives us joy but it is also work and so it's like we're always in work mode a little bit yeah and also like being around your friends who are not comedians can really remind you of like where your strengths with your humor are because right when you're like we are we're all fucking over like desensitized yeah so so, like to make a comedian laugh it's got to be so much more something yeah and it's easy to think like oh i guess my stuff like to think like you're not relatable. Not that I'm I'm not running bits on anyone, but you ever like you hang out with friends and they're cracking up at something that you're like, you wouldn't even go, that's a good idea. Cause it's like, so basic. But then you go, Oh, actually like, that that's is the, good. That's, those people are in the audience. That's the energy though. And that's like the energy is like, Oh, why, why was I able to make these people laugh so easily without any construct or whatever? It's yeah. like, Oh, that's because it's the energy that yeah. it's you're the personality. It's that's what's getting yeah, through. You're coming out yeah. instead of, trying to focus on like what's the thing and exactly. like yeah that's so great and whatever i could go on forever but I yeah won't. um elliot's passing away in the chair <laughs> uh where can people find you at jeff baldinger on uh, instagram and uh twitter at jeffrey baldinger on tiktok j-e-f-f-r-e-y go follow jeffrey go see him wherever he's going jeffrey baldinger.net for tour dates yay, yay. and uh thanks for stopping by thanks for having me Bye-bye.